Welcome to our channel. In today's video, we will discuss about China-Afghanistan crude oil mega project. While a deal to extract oil has raised hopes in the war-torn nation, experts warn of China's sketchy record. Let's get started. The Taliban-run Afghanistan saw its first significant foreign investment last month when a Chinese firm signed a 25-year-long, multi-million dollar contract to extract oil. Experts are cautiously optimistic the project may bring jobs and income despite China's sketchy record on executing deals. Xinjiang Central Asia Petroleum and Gas Company, see PEIC. On January 6, the Taliban signed with Xinjiang Central Asia Petroleum and Gas Company, see PEIC, a subsidiary of the state-owned China National Petroleum Company, CNPC, a contract to extract oil from the Amu Darya Basin, which stretches between Central Asian countries and Afghanistan, where it covers about 4.5 square kilometers, 1.73 square miles, the deal will see an investment of $150 million in the first year in Afghanistan and $540 million over the next three years. The daily rate of oil extraction will be from 1,000 to 20,000 tons. Sketchy past. While the announcement has brought some initial cheer to the beleaguered country, old Afghan hands are cautious in their optimism not only because China is yet to see through any of its investments in the country's mining sector, but because this particular deal sounds just like the one that previous Afghan government had called off on account of corruption. That exploration and production sharing deal was struck in 2011 under the previous Afghan government between China's state-owned CNPC and an Afghan company called Watton Group for the cash key block, one of the three blocks now part of the recent Amu Daria tender. China imports gas from Turkmenistan via four pipelines, three of which transit through Uzbekistan and one via Tajikistan. Afghanistan was offered the opportunity to be part of the fourth pipeline. The Afghan government at the time asked CNPC to be part of the tendering process, which they rejected. It was a great opportunity for Afghanistan to develop its petroleum sector had the Chinese agreed to a fair tendering process. Afghanistan has significant potential for oil and gas. Afghanistan was among the major exporters via Turkmenistan to the Soviet Union. However, there hasn't been sufficient exploration in the last few decades, which requires billions in investment. The previous government had hoped China would be a significant investor in Afghan extractors, including copper, oil and gas, but very little materialized. There were certain regulatory and budgeting concerns of CNPC's expenditures in Amu Darya EPSC, and when the government raised questions and hired independent auditors, CNPC shut the field and its staff left the country. The expenses were higher, and contracts were given to Chinese companies without following proper procurement rules. When we visited China to ask CNPC to resume the deal, they asked to be the sole source for arrangements of the entire Amu Darya Basin, covering 10 blocks. But the government decided against it and instead put the potential gas block up for bidding. We offered for them to be part of the tender process, but they were not interested. In 2008, a Chinese company took a 30-year lease from S. Anek Mines to extract nearly 11.8 million tons of copper. Until the concrete investments are actually made on the ground, I would be skeptical of considering any of the announced figures or targets as being more than declarative ambitions. Political Significance Nevertheless, the deal has a degree of political significance given the Taliban government's pariah state status, said GIE Zhu. But it is also not completely surprising. Chinese corporations had been publicly in contact with Taliban over the past year to renegotiate and restart previous mining and oil contracts settled in 2008 and 2011. This deal is essentially the fruit of those talks, she said. Zhu also pointed out that the Taliban have been engaged in negotiations with several other neighbors as well to resume economic cooperation projects. Among Afghanistan's neighbors, broadly, there is consensus that there is no alternative to some form of engagement with the Taliban, if only for reasons of ensuring regional stability and security, she said. Chinese interest in Afghanistan is driven by two major factors, preventing an entrenchment of the Eastern Turkestan Islamic Movement, ETIM, and the return of the U.S. to the region, Sadr said. 
China's renewed interest in Afghanistan came after the fall of the United States-backed Afghan government. Independent Chinese investors were making inroads, albeit weak and flailing attempts, into Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. This latest deal cements China's presence in the war-ravaged country. China is also aware of the Taliban's limitations and, as a result, has not committed much, Sadr added. The investments under the Taliban deal are significantly less than those announced between 2002 and 2021. Thank you for joining us today as we explored the China-Afghanistan crude oil megaprojects. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on the latest information about China-Afghanistan crude oil, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep exploring, keep innovating, and keep striving. We'll see you in the next video.